You're watching Shalom TV, celebrating Jewish culture. Funding for Shalom TV has been provided by the following. and by viewers like you. I'm Mark Golub, and in the news everywhere in the Jewish world is discussion of what may be a very significant development in the way Judaism is practiced in the state of Israel. As we reported yesterday, as Tisha Bader described for you on Shalom TV News Update, IBA had a discussion of this. The chairman of the Jewish Agency for Israel, Natan Sharansky, has made a formal proposal to non-Orthodox Jewish leaders in America and to Israeli leaders to change the Orthodox monopoly control of Jewish observance at the Western Wall in Jerusalem. And I want to make sure everybody watching understands what we're talking about here. The retaining wall of what once was the Temple Mount is the wall around this large hill upon which the Temple was built first by King Solomon some 900 years before the Common Era and then was rebuilt by Ezra and Nehemiah in the 6th century BCE. The Temple with its Holy of Holies that stood upon in the center of it, stood upon this hill, the Temple Mount, and there was a retaining wall surrounding the Temple Mount, which held it in place. The Temple itself was destroyed in the year 70 CE by the Romans. None of the Temple remains. But the retaining wall does remain, and the western portion of this wall has become the holiest spot in the Jewish world for centuries Jews have prayed at this piece of wall. They've inserted prayers written on pieces of paper into the wall. Non-Jews witnessing Jews praying at the wall, sometimes seeing them weep or cry, gave it the name the Wailing Wall. Please understand, Jews would not call it the Wailing Wall. For Jews, it is the Kotel. Kotel means wall in Hebrew. It is the Kotel, or it is the Hakotel Hama'aravi, which means it is the Western Wall. In 1948, during the War of Independence, the old city of Jerusalem was conquered by Jordan, and the Western Wall fell into Arab hands. No Jew was allowed into the old city or to visit the Western Wall while it was controlled by Jordan from 1948 until 1967. In 1967, when Jordan attacked Israel during the Six-Day War, Israel entered the West Bank and liberated the old city of Jerusalem, and Jews flocked to the Western Wall. There were famous photographs taken of young Israeli soldiers standing at the wall. The chief rabbi of the IDF blew the shofar at the Western Wall. And soon after, the area in front of the Western Wall was cleared out and made into a beautiful plaza where men and women could come and pray again at the holiest site in the Jewish world. And to accommodate the Orthodox in Israel, a machitza, a screen divider, was erected to separate where men and women could each stand at the wall, since in Orthodox synagogues, men and women are separated. Over time, the observance at the Western Wall became more and more strictly Orthodox with the sanction of the Israeli government. And when Jewish women wanted to express themselves Jewishly in the women's section to wear a tallit or to carry a Torah or to read the Torah, the Orthodox establishment refused to permit such practices and the Israeli government supported the Orthodox establishment. So that Israelis such as Anat Hoffman, who became a leader of a group formerly known as Women of the Wall, if Anat tried to wear a tallit or read from the Torah, just carry a Torah into the women's section of the Western Wall, she was actually arrested and often physically removed from the area. 
for non-Orthodox American Jewry. This has become a major bone of contention for years and years with Orthodoxy in Israel, and because the Israeli government supports the Orthodox position with a piece of the Israeli government. And for Israelis, such as Anat Hoffman, the Orthodox monopoly of the wall has been a major failure of Israeli society and Israeli life. And recently, the issue became especially volatile after a rather extreme arrest of Anat Hoffman. And as a result, Prime Minister Netanyahu agreed to ask Natan Sharansky if he could find a solution to this problem, to this controversy. Natan Sharansky just visited with Jewish leaders this week, and he made, in essence, the following proposal. That a portion of the wall further down the excavated western side, under what is now known as Robinson's Arch, that there would be a piece of the western wall now built up in a similar fashion to this plaza, this terrace, that currently houses the men's and women's section of the western wall, that part of the wall that's always shown in photographs. And this would become a third new section of the wall, equally as beautiful, obviously equally as holy, since it is the same wall. But now there will be non-Orthodox observances at this third section of the wall, and it will be used for egalitarian purposes and again for any non-Orthodox observances, so that, for example, if a non-Orthodox Jew wanted to stand at this portion of the wall with a woman, his wife, his daughter, a woman friend, it would be possible for men and women and women now to stand together at this third section, beautiful section of the Western Wall. The question now is, is this a satisfactory solution to a problem that has been eating away at the State of Israel? And for some answers, I am so pleased to have on our phones right now from Boston, where she is at Harvard, the person who spoke more than any other in defense of women's rights at the wall, and therefore the woman who can speak about the appropriate, appropriateness of the uh, Sharansky's proposal better than anyone else, from the women of the wall, and also someone I hope you've enjoyed meeting through Shalom TV, Anat Hoffman herself. Anat, how wonderful to have you. How are you? Hi, Shalom, Mark. Thank you for this introduction, starting from Noah's Ark. Wow. <laughs> Almost from Noah's Ark. All right, so Anat is Natan Cherensky's suggested proposal of creating a third section under Robinson's Arch, a beautiful terraced section is it acceptable to you? Hey, hey, I just I must say something about your introduction, Mark. You get the you, you're you're presenting it as if there is a tension here between Orthodox and non-Orthodox, and God knows there are tensions there. But women of the wall have a very strong Orthodox component within them. Absolutely. And Sharansky met here in the United States with non-Orthodox and OU and Aguda representatives, Orthodox too. It's a, it's it's not really orthodox versus non-orthodox. It's uh, religious, extreme religious establishment people versus the rest of the the rest of us. Mm -hmm. There are many moderate and moderate orthodox, modern orthodox people who are very unhappy with what's happening at the wall today. They feel a, that the the rabbi of the wall and his and his ushers are dictating life choices to them. Women of the wall pray halachically. We have Orthodox women within our group, and they're the ones being detained and arrested as well. So I'm, it's I'm not. I'm very thickens. glad you clarified it, and you are correct. In my own introduction, it made it sound as if it was an Orthodox, simply Orthodox on one side and non-Orthodox on the other, and you have absolutely clarified that there are many people, and we've shown videos of you, and obviously you are surrounded by Jews of every expression of Judaism, right, including right. Orthodox Jews. <laughs> right, so, yes, so the new plaza is going to be an egalitarian plaza. It will not be the non-Orthodox plaza. It will be an egalitarian plaza, which will, will, the test of the new plaza will be how welcome will we be to Orthodox worship. 
it's very important that Orthodox, that moderate Orthodox will feel very welcome there, and that their worship and their way of expression will be uh, uh, looked upon with uh, with great welcoming there. This this will be our big test. So women of the wall, uh, of course, think this is a wonderful plan. We think it's a wonderful plan because it's a dramatic change in what's going on now, and what's going on now is intolerable. Yes. It has alienated so many of us from coming to the wall. However, uh, this is a very ambitious plan, so ambitious that it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of money, and uh, we want to pray for its success. And we want to pray hard, and we want to pray at the women's section of the wall, wearing our talitot, reading Torah, praying out loud, blowing shofar, until this happens. There are many obstacles that may happen, and we, um, we've been around for 24 years, so we've seen, <laughs> we've seen time go by. So the interim period is very important for us, and as I said, we want to pray hard for this success, and we want to pray free of uh, intimidation and free of harassment at the w- women's section of the wall. Tomorrow is the new month of Iyal. Tomorrow uh, it will be around uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, U.S. time. Women of the wall will gather at the western wall to uh, celebrate the new month of Adal. There are threats from ultra-Orthodox uh, sections to, uh, to attack them and to stop them with our bodies. That's what the posters say in the ultra-Orthodox neighborhoods. The chief of police said that he will protect women of the wall from anyone trying to attack them, but at the same time he will arrest any woman of the wall who will wear a talit or who will attempt to read Torah or who will uh, uh, pray in a way that is contrary to local custom, in a way that offends the feelings of others. Uh, So one of the tests of uh, goodwill will be tomorrow morning. I want you to help me understand a couple of things that you said. First... I did make a distinction between an orthodox section of the wall and a non-orthodox. And you said you would rather have the distinction expressed by the word egalitarian. And then you said the test of this new section to be built up, and it will take time, that this section, the test of it will be whether there can be orthodox egalitarian expression at the wall. Did I understand you properly? Yes, yes. Now, in... In America, if I were to go into most Orthodox synagogues, there is obviously going to be mechitza. Ah, in many, but what in, kind of mechitza? I'm sorry? What kind, but yes, but what kind of a mechitza? For sure that Orthodox, uh, Orthodox communities need a mechitza. But I'm looking for people who are not looking for a mechitza made of cement with metal in the middle or whatever, that, ha- that can handle a symbolic separation between men and women. And many of these moderate, modern Orthodox who are very brave, it's one of the hardest things to be as a modern Orthodox in, in this world today, uh, require the separation, but don't like the way things are run by the ultra-Orthodox. I would like a group like Women of the Wall, which has, as I said, a strong Orthodox component, to feel comfortable at the egalitarian section, surrounding themselves symbolically by a mechitza, and having a women prayer without any harassment, with respect from everybody else. I think the first bat mitzvah for girls, the first bat mitzvah, you know, there's never been a bat mitzvah at the women's section. I think that egalitarian plaza will be an excellent place for that bat mitzvah. Absolutely, absolutely. But uh, Wouldn't it are be you, wonderful? Let, but as I said, this looks like a 10-year project and a $200 million at least expense. There are many... Uh, Many rivals to this idea. Okay, hold. Uh, hold starting hold. with the Muslim Waqf, the Jordanian government, which is in charge of all the holy places in the Muslim uh, in Jerusalem, the archaeologists of Israel and the world. We are talking about changing one of the most important archaeological sites in Israel. Yes. And uh, and I'm sure the ultra orthodox will have a word or two. And uh, I I hope that the uh, that the government of Israel will adopt this uh, plan in its entirety. And as I said to you, I want to pray very hard for its success. And where do I want to pray? 
You know where. I do. I I'm do. I'm going to break the women's <laughs> section of the wall. Okay. With my sisters oh. wearing a tallit, praying out loud, and reading Torah. Okay, but I want you to be patient with me. Walk through, take me through this step by step, because I want you to explain to me. Are you? Well, I said that I want to be able to stand at this third section of the wall, alongside my wife or my daughter. Will I be able to do that? Yes, it's 90 meters. Right now, this plaza is 60 meters divided. So 12 meters are for women and 48 meters are for men. Do the math. It's 25% for women. Now, we want to add to the, what Sharansky is offering is to add to the 60 meters, 90 meters, much bigger. It's a huge plaza, what he's offering. Yes. And it will have room for everybody. Are you suggesting that this part of the wall will have another three or two sections? It will have a, the possibility uh, or the potential to, uh, to uh, answer the needs of the variety of, a, of, of worship within, the, within a modern orthodoxy and non-orthodoxy. So if there and were... I'm saying that it's easy, very easy to help to, to answer the needs of non-orthodox. I think the test of the pluralism pluralistic plaza will be how we adhere to the needs of the modern orthodox. I understand. And it will be, it's, 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 with goodwill, we could, we could do it. And I can think of many, many solutions that oh, we could do. Has Natan Cherensky specifically addressed this concern, which you identify beautifully for us? And again, I want to make sure our audience understands what I, uh, what I understand you to be saying, Anat, is that you want at this larger plaza, some way in which if there are non-Orthodox Jews who want to pray, men and women together, they can do that. But if there are modern Orthodox Jews who do want to, to retain the concept of a machitza, but at the same time be able for a complete egalitarian expression within modern Orthodoxy, that there will be places to do that for each one of those groups. Is yes. that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. And then... I'm asking you now, is that Sharansky's proposal? Sharansky's proposal has, look, this is one of the details that he's not looking into. The details that have to be worked out here are so immense and so complex. This is this, one of the smaller ones. What will, a, what will a modern Orthodox group do, or what would a group like Women of the Wall do? It's very solvable. But the most important thing is that the egalitarian plaza will be hopefully a place where the rabbi of the wall will not dictate life choices to anyone. Yes. It won't be run by the Western Wall Heritage Foundation, or at least not in its current makeup, which is 15 ultra-Orthodox men. It will be run by a table resembling the Jewish agency. Jews from the diaspora, together with Jews from Israel, men and women, all the streams, and, and a feeling of... of appreciation towards the diversity and pluralism of the Jewish world. That's, that's what the whole thing should have been. Absolutely. I have here a statement that was put out by the rabbi of the Western Wall, Shmuel Rabinowitz, obviously ultra-Orthodox, who seems to be willing to support the plan. And this is what he said, and I want you to comment. Uh, Rabinowitz said, this redivision of the plaza does not match my worldview as I believe that there should be one side of prayer according to the place's customs. But we can live with this solution. What's your th thinking of this statement? I agree with him completely. This is not exactly my worldview. I think the whole place should be egalitarian and pluralistic. But I can live with this solution. Okay. Do I understand then your biggest concern is that there's a long way between an idea being A, articulated, and B, accepted, and I understand, Anat, the Knesset still has to vote on Sharansky's proposal, but that there's a long time between a proposal and the time when, lo and behold, Anat Hoffman, Women of the Wall, Modern Orthodox, Egalitarian, Non-Orthodox Jews will all just stand in prayer and enjoy at the other sex, this new section of the Western Wall, and that you're concerned, I guess, not only that it will take time, 
but that it really has to happen. And there is some concern now whether the process will go, even if you accept it and Rabinowitz accepts it and Sharansky likes it and Netanyahu likes it. What, on a scale of 1 to 10, what do you think the chances are that this proposal will come about even within the next 10 years? Got me there, Mark. Aww. Well, it all depends if we're allowed to pray with our Talitot and our, tali and our Torah at the Western Wall for you the won't, next 10 years. Uh, not, you won't be. You will not be. You will, well, uh, you'll still be dragged away. You'll be dragged away. Well, it may be we need many more women to be detained. Mm -hmm. I think when uh, 100 women are in the Jerusalem jail, which is way above and beyond how many cells they have for women, uh, maybe things will speed up. Uh, I can think of a solution that does not require 10 years and building and $200 million. What's that? Time sharing. Instead of sharing space, sharing time. You the made that will be you, able to Orthodox synagogue a few hours every day, and it will, the partition will be gone, and it will be a not ultra-Orthodox synagogue for a few hours every day. I, I think just the sight of the partition being removed... And just the idea that the rabbi is not in charge four, five, six hours every day will be a kick in the head, a real revolution for Israelis. And is there any significant move within Israel for that to happen? No, uh, that's <laughs> that takes super guts. Right. But all I can tell you is that Jews traditionally have always built structures in time rather than in space. If you look in Europe, you see all these huge cathedrals that took 300, 400 years to build, and Jews have not built such huge cathedrals. We built a palace in time. We built the Shabbat. Yes. We built Pesach. We built a, a discipline within time. We bless time. We say, We bless the time. And we're, we're brilliant in that. And I think we with some goodwill, look, in, in the tomb of the patriarchs, we're able to, uh, to share with the Muslims uh, time. I would like to see how we can share every day time. That requires no money, no investment, just requires that the partition could be uplifted and removed just a few hours every day. You know what? Even without removing the partition, just removing the rabbi, <laughs> between 10 in the morning and 3 in the afternoon until Mincha. He is not in charge. Okay. I, 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 I understand I what you're saying. I, I, I think you have a better chance of this passing the Knesset and they build out this area even if it takes 10 years. And incidentally, my instinct is the Knesset will be hospitable to this and there will not be enough objection from ultra-Orthodox in the Knesset. Do you think I'm right, or am I being too romantic? Uh, this is not going to be a Knesset vote. This is going to be adopted or not adopted by the government of Israel. So are you saying it's a cabinet decision? Yes. Well, I'll say the same thing. I believe the cabinet does not want, to, does not want this to drag on. No, and you're likely I think to get a the cabinet vote. sees the uh, rift growing between diaspora Jews and, Israel, and Israeli Jews over this issue as a strategic threat to Israeli interests. Yes. And they want to solve this issue. I agree. Anand, do you know Dove Lippman, a new member of Knesset? Yes, I do. <laughs> By the way, um, I interviewed him yesterday. The interview is going to be on Shalom TV on Sunday. He considers himself to be a Haredi Jew, but yes. he's part of uh, Yesh Atid, the yes. party of Yair Lapid, and he has a most wonderful embracing view I of know. what Judaism should be in the state of Israel. I it's know, sort of he's refreshing. one radical Haredi. I'm sorry? He is one radical Haredi. Yes, he is, in a very different sense of the word radical, He's an yes. honorary woman of the world, too. Yes, um, and what I'm really asking you is, to what extent is Dove Lippman representing no one but himself? Or to what extent <laughs> do you feel he is representing a new movement within Israeli society? I can't comment on that. I'm not in the ultra-Orthodox world, but you, you, might, you, you, you're, you probably imagine that he doesn't have a great following right now in Israel, but he's... So it's such a refreshing voice. Isn't he? I'm so glad to see him in the Knesset. 
Um, in general, are there things that give you hope? I'm, and I'm not asking this in a sort of a, a Pollyanna sense. I'm asking you, when you see the suggestion made by Sharansky, and yes, I understand it's a long way off, but as you said it yourself, this is a major moment in the arc of Israeli history and therefore world Jewish history. Are there things at the moment, more so than when we were together in Jerusalem, give you hope? Where are you in your own mind now in terms of where Jewish life is going in Israel? Well, one of the things that gives me hope is uh, to what extent women of the wall have uh, stirred the hearts of diaspora Jews. I always thought that Israel is way too important to be left to Israelis, and it looks like uh, diaspora Jews are taking on the the role of watchdog and caring friend that actually encourages Israel to do the right thing. And I think we would never have come to this festive day of really looking at a dramatic, radical uh, change at the Western Wall if it wasn't for diaspora Jews taking an active role. I encourage you all to continue with that. Don't leave Israel to Israelis. It's, it's too precious. If we fail in this, we'll not get another Jewish state. This is the one experiment we, we get in this lifetime. I can't think of a more a riveting dialogue in our lifetime than what are the values that should navigate the Jewish state. And these Jewish values are what you have to fight for. You have to fight for them in the, wherever you live here, abroad, and you have to fight for them in Israel. I'm not Hoffman. I love talking to you, and I really want you back in the studio. You come to New York enough so that maybe on an upcoming trip, you'll visit me and sit at this table with me, and you'll share some of your insight. You have done extraordinary good for the Jewish world, and I wish you called Tuba Hatzlacha. Good okay. luck up at Harvard, and I'll, we'll, I'll continue to chase you, and we'll sit together as soon as possible. Bye. Thank you very much. Anad Hoffman, chairman of Women of the Wall, and again, to, in such a large extent, the success that has uh, the non-Orthodox world, and she says the Orthodox world as well, modern Orthodoxy in Israel, has achieved it, has been because of her and her tireless efforts. I know she's a controversial figure. I know there are some people who feel she makes issues where there need be none. But the reality is she is saying something very, very important about the future of modern Jewish life and the state of Israel. As always, I invite you to be in touch with me with any thoughts or comments you may have through the ideas expressed by Anat Hoffman. Please email me, write me, post on our Facebook wall, tweet me. I look forward to hearing from you. My thanks again to Tisha Bader for producing this edition of In the News. Until the next time, I'm Mark Golub. Be well, my friends.